Welcome to 10 Minute KQL. Whether you're a technology pro looking to master the Kusto query language or new to the world of IT and looking to learn your first language, 10 Minute KQL is a place to level up your skills. This is the third video in the KQL Advanced series. In the last session, we learned how to parse JSON objects using parse.json and extend. In today's session, we'll discuss how to parse JSON objects inside of arrays and nested JSONs. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell. In the last session, we left off with an example of a JSON object in an array. And we talked about the concept of indexing. We were also looking at the sign in logs table and we projected the status and authentication details fields. We were able to parse the status field but we were not able to parse the authentication details field because the JSON was in an array. When we look at the schema, we see the authentication details field is a string data type. First, let's cast it to a dynamic so we can try to manipulate it more easily. When we look at the schema, we verify that both fields are now dynamic. Let's try our normal extension method and see what happens. It does make a new field called test, but there's no visible values in the field, so this didn't work for us. Let's take a closer look at this array. When we expand one of our records, we see our two fields, and when we expand our authentication details field that we're trying to parse, we see a 0 and a 1. These represent the elements inside of the array. The first is at position 0 and the second is at position 1. There are two separate JSON objects in this array. Before we can parse it, we need to identify which element within the array we want to parse. We can do this by adding the element index at the end of the field name. Here we add a zero in brackets to represent the first JSON in the array. Remember, the first object in an array is indexed at position 0, and the second object is positioned at index 1. When we execute this query, we can see it successfully parsed the key that we're referencing. We learn that even if we have a JSON inside of an array, we can still make sure that the field is dynamic, then we can identify the element in the array we want to parse from, and lastly, identify the key we want to parse. Now let's show an alternative method to work with arrays. We know that the authentication details field has an array with two elements, both of which are JSON objects. We can take each element out of the array and make it into its own record by using mvexpand. Before we show mvexpand, we want to refresh on a concept in the intermediate session. We use summarize along with make set to take values from multiple records and compress them into a set which is displayed horizontally in one record. In essence, with the array problem set, we can use mvexpand to do the reverse. We can take items that are compressed horizontally into one record, and we can make them into their own individual records stacked vertically. The mv in mvexpand stands for multi-value, and in this case, we have two JSON objects or values that we want to expand vertically. To use mvexpand, the fields need to be in a dynamic data type. Next, let's use mvexpand and place the name of the field we want to expand in parentheses. When we execute this query, we now see that the brackets that used to encase the two JSON objects are now gone and each JSON is in its own record without brackets. If you look closely, there are duplicated time fields for every two records, because those time fields were present in both JSON objects. Now we can select a key inside of the JSON to parse using extend. We'll make a new field called auth method that will show the authentication method detail key.
When we execute this query, we see that the value is in every other record because that particular key was only in the first JSON object and not in the second JSON of each array. When using MVExpand, you may find that some arrays may have 10 or more objects that are extracted. When this happens, any fields in the record that are constants will be duplicated, and any variables associated with the expansion process will be new in each record. Depending on the use case, you may need to summarize the data after using MVExpand. Now that we have several ways to parse JSONs that are part of an array, let's talk about nested JSONs. In the last example, we had an array that contained two separate JSON objects. It's possible to have a JSON object that has a JSON inside of the JSON. This is called a nested JSON. To better understand the concept, we created our own test data set. When we take a look at this output example, we see a single JSON that has the first key value pair, which looks like what we're used to seeing, and a second key, which has a nested JSON. Inside the nested JSON are additional key value pairs. While this example has one layer of nesting, it's possible to have multiple layers of nesting. We casted this field to a dynamic data type, so it's already ready for parsing. First, let's extend key one like we normally would. We can see that it works. So now let's try to extract values from nested keys. We can see the parse worked. We simply added a second period, which identifies the nested key to parse. If we wanted to extend the second nested key, we could use the same method. That's all for today's session on parsing JSONs from an array using MVExpand and parsing nested JSONs. In the next session, we'll transition to parsing and manipulating strings. For homework, use the sign-in logs table and the authentication context class references field. Parse the two keys associated with the second of the two JSON objects in the array into their own fields using the extend method. Post your query in the comments section to learn with and help others. We'll see you in the next session. If you find value in these videos, please support the channel by hitting the like button. And if you want to receive notifications of new videos, hit the subscribe button with the notification bell.